thank you for the parents and students who are joining today as per this uh, career talk on sports. And uh, before I introduce to the two speakers here, I just want to give you a brief history about the sports and how it is taken as in the world. So the history of sports goes back to the ancient times. It has been used to recruit people in military, to entertain as a part of religious activities and many more things. Even in these extraordinary times, we see Olympics being held in Tokyo as a sign of human resilience and a celebration of the spirit. Until very recently, uh, pursuing a career in sports meant sacrificing a mainstream professional career. We have to deal with the mindset of, um, you know, I would say every one of us, uh, especially, uh, you know, parents to accept that career can also be made out in sports. They can easily accept it as a hobby, um, as an extracurricular activity. But when it comes to make their child select a sport as a career, um, they all give a second thought and they try to, uh, you know, explain them that how difficult it can be or how, uh, you know, revenue generating it can be for them. So, uh, but sports uh, industry has become organized in the recent future. And we have seen many uh, rise in the uh, career related uh, jobs and courses. In fact, there are uh, many uh, graduation and post-graduation courses which have come up in the sector of uh, sports. So today we have two accomplished uh, sports persons who have dedicated their lives to the world of sport and give students across various sports uh, related areas. Welcome, Dennis. Welcome, Kerry. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be Thank you. Me. Thank you for taking out time today. So uh, let me give a brief introduction about Kerry. Kerry started her career in sport from the age of 16 when she became a swimming teacher. Sport always has been Kerry's passion and she believes playing sport and working in it has given her the values to become who she is today. She has two degrees in sport, BSc honors in sports rehabilitation and injury prevention and a PGC in secondary physical education. She has worked in many roles within sport and education, being a sports rehabilitator for many London rugby teams, running her own clinic, being a physical education teacher and teacher trainer to, know, uh, to now setting up and running her own business called Infused Growth. Infused Growth is an infusion of her, all her qualifications in the aim to support people with physical and psychological growth and development through sport education and coaching. That's amazing, Kerry. You have so much to offer. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you for the introduction and for letting me be here today. Oh, thank you. Let me give you an uh, uh, introduction about Dennis as well. So he graduated in sports management launches and launches company in Belgium. For two years, he helped young sportsmen to set up their game. After that, Dennis saw opportunities popping up in Middle East and decided to you know, give a try to it. Since then, he's a sports management consultant for football clubs, academies, coaches, and players in the Middle East and in Europe. Today, Dennis is also the technical director of the Belgium Football Academy in Dubai. Wow, that's amazing, Dennis. Thank you for your time today. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, thank you, you know, because uh, this is such an important topic and the, I, um, before, uh, let me give a short introduction about myself as well. Uh, myself, Meghna Khan, I am the founder of MK Counseling uh, Services. I, uh, my basic job is to align the child's strength, their interests, their passions into the respective career fields which are available. And because of that, I selected this topic and reached out to you guys because I come across many students these days who want to take sports professionally, who want to um, uh, give their full time to it. And they don't want, they are so sorted in their mind that they don't want to you know, have a parallel career to it. They want to make a career within uh, their interest areas. So um, that is why we uh, have 
uh, doing this career talk today and we would look forward for your input for your guidance by helping the students how they can take this uh, their uh, interest in career the career options which are available so um very we'll start with you why don't you tell us about your relationship with sports and how you uh, ended up establishing infused growth okay so yeah so like i said sport has literally always been my life from being very very young when i was always playing sport um it's how i made my friends it's how i gained my confidence mm -hmm. um like i wasn't a natural academic at school so sport for me was was absolutely everything um i then obviously got to university and managed to do a degree in sports rehabilitation so that's like physio but only for sport um, mm -hmm. so I worked with a lot of teams there, um, still carried on my swimming teaching, my personal training, so mm -hmm. many little qualifications in sport, but everything was sports related. I never stepped out of that box. <laughs> um, I okay. then went on to be a physical education teacher. So teaching students to, to love sport and health and fitness to then go on to, to training teachers. Then I kind of sat down one day and although I love working for everybody else and helping everyone else, I had to find a different way to do that that was best for me and best to do my way to help other people. So mm -hmm. that's why I, I set up Infused Growth, which really is a crazy infusion, to be perfectly honest. Everything from teaching swimming to, to life coaching to injuries and psychology, kind mm -hmm. of putting it all together to be able to give people growth through whatever that may be for them. So hopefully health and wellness related, um, okay. but we can grow in so many ways, but that's still same advocate was, was sport and health and fitness for me. So we are, you are one spot place where people can get a holistic uh, development in all the aspects of uh, sports. Yeah, so sports, coaching, um, health and fitness, and then that mindset, really, it's, it's that emotional yeah. well-being that we get from sport that I think people forget that that's what it can offer us more than anything else is, is our psychological health. Mm -hmm. So everything as a whole. Okay, yeah. What about you, Dennis? Uh, what made you establish ES Team Sports? Team sport. It, is, uh, it is funny because it is kind of similar to what, what Kerry just explained. Um, mm -hmm. I grew up in sports. I've always played football. My father played professionally. Mm -hmm. So I always looked up to that. This, this was a dream I wanted to reach. Uh, my brother is a physio. So my, mm -hmm. my older brother is a physio. He's, he's working for football clubs as well. So I've always okay. wanted to, to play professionally or to, to work within the sports industry. Mm -hmm. uh, always looked up to it. I played myself and, and unfortunately I realized that I was, uh, was not dedicated enough or willing to make enough sacrifices. So um, I, I asked myself well, one day, what do I want to do? And it was definitely something with sports. So I studied sports management and, um, and I launched my company to help players get the right uh, advice, to get some help. Uh, and and I, I propose now a 360 degree program to help players and to give them what I what I couldn't have or what I was not ready to to do or to 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 yeah put put the work in. So mm -hmm. now we offer a 360 degree program where we help sportsmen with nutrition, mental. We help them mentally, physically, technically, tactically. So it's it's a very broad program that we offer to to sportsmen in order to help them. So that's how I how I started working within the sports industry. Okay. Now I have a question for both of you. Uh, probably Kerry can go first. Uh, how how what was your parents' reaction to it when you uh, when you when they saw or when you told them that you have a undying uh, interest in sports and you want to take it uh, you know align it with your career choices? How how uh, did your parents take that decision? Um, I, I was very lucky in some respects that my parents always knew that sport was my life. Um, yeah. Like I said, I wasn't a natural academic at school. The mm -hmm. only way to get me to turn up was via sport. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of the time I was lucky that I was in like a sports academy school. So they allowed us to play sport during our time when we could learn. So they mm -hmm. always gave us the opportunity to learn at the same time. 
Um, initially, I wanted to be a PE teacher. And I remember my dad going, no, they don't get paid enough money. You can't be a PE teacher. And I was like, right, OK, what am I going to do? Um, and then my other thought was obviously the sports science route, but mm -hmm. I didn't really know what opportunities were available after just sports science. So I was a bit unsure at the time. So then yeah. I chose sports rehab. Um, and again, back then I needed like three A's to get on to this degree, which is mm -hmm. a very high class degree. And I got just about a D and an E is all I scraped at my A levels because I wasn't natural. Um, mm -hmm. But I did have every coaching qualification, a lifeguard qualification, a first aid qualification. So it was all my qualifications outside of education that still got me and allowed me to be on that degree. Mm -hmm. And so I passed that degree and and then made it that way. So but I still came back to be a PE teacher after all of that. And I loved sports rehab. Don't get me wrong, but the way to work in sport with just physio is a very, very hard job. The mm -hmm. same two, three nights a week training nights and then a match day on the weekend. It's it's very hard to do that because you need to do that on top of maybe four or five other jobs as well. So yeah. it's a tough career to be in. Um, but yeah, I then went back to, to be a PE teacher. So at the end of the day, you kind of do what you want to do no matter what. And I think my parents are quite aware of that now. <laughs> um, That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Dennis? Yeah, I was very lucky also, to be honest. I, I always got the support of my parents. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, my father worked in, in, in a for a football club, so he, he pushed me actually ah, to, okay. to do that. Yes, he pushed me to, to do that. And, and that, that feels amazing when you, when you know your parents are behind you and they, they trust you in, in whatever you want to do because they know at the end of the day that sport is your passion. So if... If they can back up, back me up, or support me, it was it was amazing. So yeah. I was lucky. Yeah, you were, you had it's your family legacy. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's uh, move on. And before we uh, move on with further questions, I would uh, request to the audience who have joined us today, parents, students, if you have any questions to ask from our guest speakers. Please uh, write it in the uh, chat box and I'll take it on behalf of you. So, um, I, I mean, we have discussed that, you know, how uh, this, the main idea behind this career talk show is to help the students who have interest in uh, and are passionate about sports. So is it possible to have a dual career in sport? I mean, uh, can I employ of a company and a basketball player for example, you know, and go both hand in hand. Do you want to answer that? Do you want to start? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To you, to you. Go on. I'm going to get back to both of you, so it's fine. Whoever okay. takes it first. <laughs> Yeah, we, we discussed this a little bit earlier, and and of course it depends on the sport. It de it depends on, on 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 many factors actually. I'd say it it is definitely possible. I know some mm -hmm. some people that studied with me that are now uh, playing professionally, and at the same time they they have their job. But some sports just require a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of investment. So it's mm -hmm. not always easy. I'd say. If you, if it's necessary, it, it, it's different. Some sports re require you to have another job because you're not, not paid well enough, unfortunately, but mm -hmm. that's changing in some ways, I feel like. So I'd say if you, if you can focus 100% on your sport and if you can make, make a job out of it, then, mm -hmm. then do it. Okay. So it's also need-based. If you're able to manage your expenses with only sports, then definitely one should consider that until you reach to that point where you can manage your, uh, uh, you know, your day-to-day -day life with your own thing. But then if you want, it can still be managed with another job. Yes, I think so. Yeah. You agree with that, Kerry? Yeah, totally. I think if you want something bad enough, you'll find a way for it. And um, especially in the sports industry, if you're working mm -hmm within the industry as well as playing professionally, they'll always adapt their ways to be able mm -hmm. to support you to do both. So for example, if you were playing, I know say rugby for England, or you were doing certain events that are not all the time, then mm -hmm. they would let you have time off to be able to go and play that sport at that level. 
and then come back and still represent yourself in your job because you're a good role model then, especially for example, if you're a teacher and you have time off to go play for your country and then you come back and teach, what mm. better role model to your students other than to, to do exactly what they want to do? Mm. So uh, there's always... Okay, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, so I would like to ask you, Ravi uh, Dennis, you can start with that, that if someone wants to be a professional uh, player, what is the right for them to engage uh, themselves into the uh, professional training. I mean, what is the right age? Because we think in, when the child is in primary, they are too young. When they go grow up secondary, they are already settled. So what would be the right time for a person to start the professional training if they want to make a, a career in sports? Yes, I, I, again, it really depends on, 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 on different factors depending on the sports, the uh the the country you live in the so so it's it's really different but i'd say you can start very early um of course it still needs to be fun i think it's it's mainly the coaches and and the surroundings of of the young players that can help and make the difference mm -hmm. but you can start very early um as long as it stays fun and as long as as the child really wants it mm -hmm. then then of course you, you can start and, and train on performance um, okay. without doing too much of course because because we've seen in the past players that were just burned whenever they they arrived professional mm -hmm. or they signed their first contract and they were just burned because they they did too much so you have to be careful um, but i'm sure there is there is plenty of of uh, organizations that can mm -hmm. help you or help the players train properly um, mm -hmm. and, and you can you can ask uh, you can sorry do it do it differently um, I think when you start younger, you have to train not only physically, but, but mentally also. That's a very important mm -hmm. aspect. And you can involve the players by asking questions. Because in the past, we've also seen a lot of, of coaches that, that made robots. And whereas you have to ask questions, involve the players, they have the solutions. And they need to learn to adapt. Because later on in their career, it will be very important for them to be able to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I got your point. So we have a participant, uh, Pratibha, who is asking question. In sports, one can have a very short period of career as a professional player. So after that, what will be the career? Plan about this should be done at the beginning of sports career. So please throw some light on this issue. So yes, uh, it's quite, as it's a physical game, we all know that the life uh, or the lifespan in the sports uh, is not very uh, high so the retirement age is quite early so w what people should be ready with their uh, plan b right from the beginning and what are the options uh, they can uh, take up after that yeah no totally i think you've always got to have a plan and a plan b because you know like we say it doesn't last forever um anything can stop us from playing whether that's injuries or or just age or whatever it is that happens to, to be the thing. Um, so I would always say have, have that backup plan, whether you want to be a coach, whether you want to be a physio, whether you want to coach uh, the new generation coming through, whether you want to be a teacher, you know, sports scientist. There's, there's so many roles within, within sport that you could possibly take up um, and it can still be in the sport that you love. So there's, there's a never-ending profession, to be honest. If, if you love it that much, you, you'll find an opportunity within it. Mm -hmm. Dennis, you want to say something on that? Yes, I'd like to, to add that it, it, it's just a, a question of perspective, I, I think. Of course, you have to have a plan B, and if you can study at the same time, I'd always recommend that. But we often see it as an end of a career. I don't think it's the end of your career whenever you get injured, whenever you, you're too old to play professionally just another step into your career you can bounce uh, bounce and just become a coach become anything else it's not a a line and or a dot that that we put at the end of your career it's just another step the same way in a company you you jump from junior manager to senior manager to ceo this is just one continuity it's not the end of something of something okay yeah i hope it will help uh uh, the people here, and uh, I hope you have gotten their idea. Uh, next, what I would like to ask is that that uh, what is 
day in your life as a sports person of course you have now uh, taking care of a lot of uh, different things like health and wellness the uh, uh, you know the guidance the coaching but being a player how how does your uh, you know 9 to 5 routine is that how much of hard work is uh, needed in that what are the minimum hours in a day you have to spend you mean to to train to actually be a professional how, how many hours yes. does that take yes yeah. how how is uh, it's a day of a professional player <laughs> tough <laughs> <laughs> um i didn't even make it uh professionally well i i made it say i i was southern counties for for swimming and then premiership 2 for for rugby um but swimming i would train before school at like 5 o'clock in the morning i would do 2 hours of training i would go to school i would train at lunch time i would do some more school i would train after school i then would compete on the weekends i had both training in the pool and land training my life my life was swimming i was known as the, the person that came smelling of chlorine every single day <laughs> because you you have to put a lot of hours in if if you want to make it mm-hmm. um to be honest it, it is a full time job on top of of life mm-hmm. okay all right yes it, it's a lifestyle more than a 9 to 5 i'd say because when you stop working at 5 in in the office you can just like close the office go home and do whatever you want mm-hmm. when you when you want to play professionally uh, you have to stay focused you have to believe in yourself work mentally you have to eat properly mm-hmm. so never really ends it's it's a lifestyle that's a that's a very good point that it's a lifestyle change it's a lifestyle dedication so you have to follow it uh, throughout your life uh, there is no escape to it exactly a lot of dedication a lot of yeah. dedication yeah okay so uh, we have another question which says to what extent do you a mentor can play a role in this case like you guys are already there with your academies and your company to help out so to what extent do you think a mentor can play a role and uh, how early one should reach uh, and ask for this professional mentorship and help any one of you can go first yes i i think it's i can i can not really put an age on it i think again you can start very early and and the parents can play an interesting role here as well by asking questions and trying again to involve the kids mm-hmm. um, without pushing them i'd say there there's a big difference between a coach and a parent and each of them need to know that it's a different role and that they, they don't have to be the coach and the parent at the same time that is that is very important they have their role and they can be a mentor for for the kids and the coach can be a yeah, plays role of 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 training and and performance so i think they can start very early without imposing or being too invasive in 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 that role yeah that's a very good point dennis because you know very often um we uh, use only our personal experience and the choices which the child makes are influenced by their parents or their friends or their relatives around they uh, they don't seek for a professional help and you don't have a right guidance toward it because sometimes it all feels that yes i can do it but until and unless you reach the right person for it you won't get the fair idea whether you know it is going to be your uh, cup of tea or not mm-hmm. yeah i think that's it i think you have to to trust your children and and to be there for them and to listen to them and be encouraging like they can have many mentors whether that is their teachers at schools whether that's their coaches whether it's mm-hmm. family friends you know everyone's there to support them and give them the information it just mm-hmm. has to be their want and if they're determined to do something they will find a way you know and they'll put those hours in to do what it is they want with that guidance it's just having that support and being listened to that i think is the most important thing uh, from a child's perspective yeah that is important which which also leads that uh, how important it is for the educational institutes to support their sports stars it may be educationally financially in whatever way possible if you see schools across uh, dubai 
now have their own teams they do inter schools inter colleges how what important role a school can play in supporting their uh, students having a good career in sports as well absolutely massive like coming from from the uk we were very lucky to have like i say we have sports academy so our football teams will join with a school to make sure that the students are getting the time to train as uh, sports academy set up for a lot of sports um, to make sure they get the opportunities. Uh, coming over to the UAE, um, I'm over in the in the government sector, and we've now set up sports science academies and schools again to give the children the opportunity to be able to train. Um, get the hours, get the education at the same time as being able to represent the country and hopefully go to the Olympics someday. So it, it's good to have that opportunity to do both at the same time. Okay. And how, what do you say, Dennis? Yes, I totally agree. It is, it is important. The earlier you start or the earlier you give opportunities to the kids, the more they will want to play sports and they I think I feel like you want to give like feed them with different kind of sports until they realize which one they really want to go for. So yeah. I think the younger they start, the better and with different sports until mm -hmm. they pick the one they really want to to work on or improve on. Yeah, I think yeah, that full recognition is required if the child does well in their academics it's uh, you know we all people of school parents everybody give a lot of recognition and same kind of recognition is needed for the sports achievements as well yeah so uh, i have another uh, student called as uh, pranav nanda the question is, is it possible to become a sports player and have a good academic status i think it's up to the student as well that's a beautiful thing to say, isn't it? Of course, like, oh, there'll be, there be doctors out there. There are people that can be sports doctors. As I said, sports physio, sports psychologists. They're, they're top of their careers um, academically as, as well as having that, that physical performance as well. So anything is possible. If, if you want something bad enough, then you'll do it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. I think we... Too much we've put we've put uh, academic academics and sports uh, against each other or in opposition, but I definitely think it's it's possible to combine both. That's amazing. All right, then we have another question from Michelle. Uh, she says, "What kind of jobs can we pursue in sports sector, and what kind of wages are we looking at?" I find there are a lot of opportunities in Dubai, but back at my home country, there is not. What could I do further to succeed? That's a good question, Michelle. Uh, can you also mention which uh, sports you are associated with? Meanwhile, uh, uh, Kerry, do you want to answer, Kerry and Dennis? Yeah, there are, well, there's literally every profession you can think of, you can do that from an angle of sport as well. Whether you want to be a lawyer in sport, a doctor in sport, a physio, a psychologist, um, working with pharmaceuticals that there are so many that every job that you have out there there is a way to do that in sport also if, if that's what you want and the salaries again God, I don't even want to know how much football coaches get paid I'm pretty sure the ones at the top get a hell of a lot of money um, but even down to say say your physios you're look well I can only tell you in pounds but you're looking at 40 50 thousand pounds a year um, and that's upwards. If, if you were, say, a psychologist for, say, Formula One, again, you're, you're looking at hundreds of thousands. So it honestly depends what job you want. You know, even as a teacher, that's 30, 40,000 starting. So it depends on what you want and what opportunity and what angle you want to go into. But there are so many jobs in sport. You know, I just started off as, just say, a personal trainer. Um, that, again, if you wanted to be doing your own business, if there's not an opportunity in your country, I then went on to exercise referral. So getting referrals from doctor surgeries to help people with say diabetes and high blood pressure and things like that using sport to be able to help their health before they had to go on to full-time medication. So there is an opportunity to, to make something no matter what there is around you. Um, there is, and it's 
the sky's the limit of how much you can earn really depending on what you want to do yeah i think it's uh you know this, this industry is now growing there are a lot of opportunities available a lot of career i can understand what michelle is saying is that it's not a very um you know rewarding uh career for everyone right from the beginning but as you add on with experience as you uh, uh, you know with the time and with your experience the value of uh, your profession increases more and then probably what i can see as in uh, you know from the outside is that the curve of salary would be increasing as you grow with your experience and with the number of uh, years of uh, you know you have invested in your sport what do you think dennis right yes as as carrie said there's a lot of opportunities any job you can think of and and carrie spoke about the medical uh, aspects of physios mm -hmm. doctors but just anything you can think of sports marketing uh, sports sponsorship communication social media it's so broad anything you can study you can then just tackle from a sports angle and you can and and that's how you can combine passion and job that's how yeah. by just making the switch and using your knowledge or theoretical knowledge by applying it to sports. Mm -hmm. So that's very interesting. And whenever you study sports management, that, that's, that's what I studied. We tackled all the different opportunities uh, to mm -hmm. become a player agent, to become a sports manager, to become, to work in sports marketing, communication, media, journalism just there's so many possibilities that you can that you can yeah make your like that can allow you to combine passion and, and work mm -hmm. and of yeah. course i also want to mention like the very end of of michelle's question uh, of course it's not as developed in in every country the sports industry i mean but it's definitely moving if you look at the the sports industry in the uae 20 years back, there was nothing. And now it's still growing. But you can also see it as an opportunity because the earlier you start with sports in a country where it's not as big, you'll be one of the first and you'll grow as fast as the industry is going to grow. And when you look at sports in Europe or in, in the US, it's huge. So it's definitely going to grow in the other parts of the world as well. Yeah. That's an important insight that uh, we have. Another question from Kabir. He says, to become a player agent, what would you say are the qualifications or skills required to succeed? Um, I think this one's for you. <laughs> You've definitely got more experience that side of things. <laughs> okay, so I'm an agent myself. And um, previously, there were exams, there were qualifications. Um, at the moment there is not so that's a good and a bad thing because anyone can just become an agent um, so that opens up the, the the possibilities for people that want to become an agent now what we see is big names agents of of messi agents of ronaldo that are making huge amounts of money because they're they're taking a commission on the player's salary but it's way more difficult than that way more difficult um so I'd say what you can work on is definitely look at some certifications online, try to find trustful ones, good ones that can help you build some confidence and uh, skills, of course. Um, but the most important thing uh, to become an agent is to, to create contacts, to network, to know people within clubs, to try to reach out to players, so that's the most important because at the end of the day, if you need to sell a player to a club, you need to know the right people. Yeah. Um, we had one more question from Pranav and that was, could you make sufficient money to live luxuriously if you become a sports player? Or is it more profitable to follow a profession which isn't associated with sports? Um, uh <laughs> nice question um, at the end of the day I always say like I say you can you make as much money as, as you put in so whatever you put in is, is what you get out so it doesn't matter whether that is in sport or in fashion or, or whatever it is that the more you put in the more you'll get out so if you want to make money you'll make money yes and you know luxury is a uh, is a reward of your efforts 
but it's more important that you have the right kind of uh, passion and dedication towards it. And once you invest that kind of an effort, I'm sure money, luxury, everything will follow. Yeah, it's being smart with your money as well. <laughs> you know, yes. investment, That's what he's asking spending your money and education. Yeah. yeah. So Anna was saying that you have to be rich to start a company. Nope. <laughs> Prana, you need to know your passion and uh, you should have faith in what you want to do. Yeah. Good idea. You have a passion towards it. You can definitely, uh, you know, you can look for investors who can help you out. Yeah. Exactly. And I'd, I'd like to add that don't focus on money. Focus mm -hmm. on what you love and what you want to do and, and the rest will follow. But don't make it the main goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's more important to understand what you really like and what you really want to do. Then once you, yeah. you know, as they all say, if there is a will, there is a way. So first you have to find your will. Yeah. And that's it. If you're, if you're happy doing what you do, then it's not a job, you know, so you will be successful because you're happy. So yeah. you've got to find whatever it is that makes you happy. And then it doesn't feel like work. And so you can give it as much as you want and, that is your success and that is your fortune is that you go to work every day and you're happy. You don't go to work to have to earn money. It, it just flips things on its heads completely and utterly because you want to do what you want to do. So you are successful then. Yes. And, and if I can compare it to what I've experienced a lot of, uh, because we help young players to become professional. So what I've experienced a lot is that most of them come to me and say, okay, I'm 15. I want to be professional. I want to be, that's my goal. That's my goal. That's, and that's what they focus on. And we can compare that to, uh, could we make sufficient money? That's my goal. That's my goal. Whereas they should focus on what they need to do to reach that goal. So it's more about the process and about how I need to train, what I need to do, what I need to eat. Instead of focusing on the, the, the professional contract, you need to focus on what you need to do in order to get that contract and not get lost by the dream or, or the, the contract. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think Pranav is saying that he has interest in uh, golf and he wants to be a golf player. And uh, he has another question that what is an ideal cost in dollars one hour lesson in swimming or football to what is the ad, average charge for a lesson is that what you're yes. asking yes. um again it depends on the coach and and depends on on who you're with um and, and the level you're you're asking for there's so many different answers to to that question so if you were just having an average swimming lesson at the mm -hmm. swimming pool to just learn to swim that for a one-to-one -one lesson for an hour, that might cost you, say, say 40 pounds for the hour. If mm -hmm. you're asking for someone to be, to, to coach you to a certain level and have more of a, a sports science kind of, of lesson, that it, it would be a lot more expensive. So it really depends on, are you asking to learn a skill for the first time with a group of people, or are you asking yeah. for coaching to to get you to the next level which is is more of a sports science kind of coaching level so it depends on what you're asking for and from, from what qualifications you're expecting yeah and it varies from academy to academy the institutes to institute yeah and if it's group sessions one-to-ones land training there, there's so many different answers depending on what it is what, exactly. what your goal is yeah yeah, let's move on. So um, another important uh, aspect is that, that the physical ability is a very important part of uh, being in the sports uh, profession. So what are the emotional requirements to survive in the field of sports? As you are already talking about mental health and uh, wellness, how important it is to be, uh, you know, emotionally uh, stable and uh, how you can, you know, survive in this field of sport. It's huge. It really is, is huge. And I think like perfect example, you have, you have Simone Biles at the moment that literally just pulled out of the Olympic finals for her mental health. Um, so you really need to, to understand yourself. Um, 
and it is it's just so so important is is to look after yourself if you're not well in your in yourself and in your own confidence and your own determination then no matter how much you want to do something you, you can't do it until you have focused that time inwardly so mm -hmm. I, I think like I said she has been a great example in that she has stood up and said no I'm not competing I'm not going to go to the Olympic finals because I'm not who I want to be right now and I'm not mentally in the right place so you have to look after yourself you have to give time for that that meditation or that mindfulness or that kind of goal setting and, and understanding of what it actually is that you want and and to look after yourself you know confidence is is really important and being able to look after anxiety and and those kind of things when you're you're all of a sudden on the blocks in front of all these people looking at you it's not the same as going swimming on the weekend with your friends so you have to have a lot of different mindfulness or different ways of being able to deal with situations and, and your mental health is is really really important Dennis do you want to add something to that yes it, it, it's very important and it's unfortunately taboo most of the time so it's good it's good at least at least start talking about it now um, because I feel like everyone could use some help whether we're working in sport or not uh, it's just taboo and and now these people are public figures so we start speaking about it but it's it's true for everyone for every job we all can use uh, some help at some point uh, and 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 we think we're uh, strong by not telling whereas I feel like we're strong by by telling and by showing that we need some help yeah it's okay to ask for help that's what people need to like you know like Dennis is saying don't if you don't feel yourself today or you're you're struggling a little bit and you you need somebody sometimes it's just somebody to talk to and yeah. other times it's understanding or examples of, of how to do things differently or or how to look after yourself you know you don't get taught that at school um that's something i've been very aware of in school you just get told to be strong and get on with it and just keep going and you don't get told to to stop for a minute and actually you do need to sit and read a book or you do need to write down what's going on in your head or whatever it is you don't get taught how to look after yourself so it, it is really really important yeah that's what i keep on saying you know there are so many things which goes in your mind it's better to you know stop worrying about it just reach out and start talking about it and it's it's good to reach out for professional help it, it always works in your favor because you know you need a validation of your thoughts whether your thinking is on the right track or not and it needs to be a uh, data driven as well because many time what we feel the reality turns out to be a little different from that so it's very important to reach out to ask for help also to uh, validate your interest if you're taking uh, any career not even sport or any other career you need to validate whether you have a real liking for it or you are inspired by someone or you're influenced by your you know sibling your cousin or your uh, parent in the family so it's very important to understand whether what decision you are making is aligning with yourself or not so um, moving on, we have another uh, question and it is from, okay, it's Pranav again. What if you want to become a player, but you don't, just don't have time? Uh, Pranav, you need to find out time. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think Pranav, uh, from your question, I can make out that you are into some other profession, but you have a love your sports so you know you need to uh, find time so that you you can keep yourself going it is going to be a big uh, stress buster for you what do you think yes i i think whenever you really want something if 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 you're passionate about it then time you can create time for anything you want so if you really love your sport then time not finding time is, might be an excuse because if, if you can create time whenever you want you decide you make your schedule even though you're at school even though you you work even though whatever you can find time in the morning in the evening during lunchtime there's plenty of time to to work on your game okay 
I just uh, read that he is 13 years old and, uh, you know, if I couldn't get a job in what my interest is, what should I do? Should I uh, give up that interest? I'm 13. What is the ideal age to get a job in 15 years? Uh, Pranav, I am happy to see that, that at this age, you have so many questions and, uh, you know, your concern and your questions is going to lead you uh, in the right direction. So it's very important Pranav, that you, you should uh, reach out for career counseling. You should find out uh, what exactly your multiple interest areas are that you need to There is a team, we can help you out in guiding what steps can be uh, taken up. So uh, it's very important. I think the first step for you is to go for a data-driven assessment for yourself, which can validate the thought process which is going on uh, with you. Right, uh, Kerry and Dennis, because he's just 13 years old and there are uh, too many uh, options which he's thinking about. Yeah, I think at the moment, you know, he's got all these ideas and all the things yeah. going around in his head of what he wants to do for the future, which is amazing. Um, and yeah. it's great to be creative and think and have all these questions and what and why we want to do things. Um, but yeah. definitely, I'm sure, you know, you can help him with careers. There are teachers at school he can talk to. There will be people in his surroundings. Um, and, and you just sit and write a little bit of a timetable, write down all the things that you want to do. You can, no reason why you can't brainstorm everything in your head and look at ways that you would like to do it. At the end of the day, we sleep for what, eight hours maximum. So eight from 24, that still leaves off 16 hours in the day. Even if we're at school for six of those hours, there's 10 hours there somewhere to, to do something. So you know, just maybe write a little timetable down of what you do each day and see what time you have left is a yes. really nice way to start and just don't overwhelm yourself. One thing a week you can work on and try and set those maybe long-term goals of your dreams and what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, we uh, missed out a question with Pratibha. It says how to get entry in good football club with respect for Indian football player. Uh, okay, so if I understand properly, it's an Indian player that would like to to the get into play football. football. Yeah. Yes. The, the, okay. It's it's not easy to answer because I don't have a lot of information about the player itself. But there's many many possibilities. There there's good clubs in India. Um, if if he trains, uh, if he's motivated, if he's dedicated, if he puts in the work then clubs will come at him. He won't even have to go to the clubs. They will see him, they will see his dedication, his hard work, the work he put in, and they will come to him. Um, of course, it, it's not always like that and people or players have to fight to, to, get a, to get into good clubs. But there's many clubs all over the world that are always looking for players. So if you work hard, you'll be rewarded. Right. So um, Pranav, I can see another question from you. What do you think is the best university to get in, which includes most of the sports? Uh, I think Pranav, you can uh, write an email to me or uh, you can WhatsApp to me and I can help you out with your uh, process and also guide you with the uh, university and sports. And are you based in Dubai? Can you share your location as well? Where are you based? So, um, that's an amazing uh, response. We have some, uh, you know, uh, much a serious and involved audience uh, today. So um, moving on, I would like to ask, uh, you know, was there any impact of a uh, pandemic on the future of sport and how much the sports industry was affected and how also uh, sports, can, uh, you know, can or has played a role in the whole, uh, you know, uh, fighting out with the pandemic yeah so oh there's so much I could talk about for that one <laughs> um, I think like from just being a PE teacher wow straight away you had to think outside the box like you've never thought before in your life to teach sport over a computer was a brand new experience but I think the thing you find with sports people 
is we love to think outside the box. We love the challenge. We love mm-hmm. to be creative. And no matter what, we have found a way. So even my friends that say were personal trainers that really struggled and say lost their clients from a face-to-face basis, they took that online. They now teach their clients online. The same with majority of of kind of professions, they found a way to to take it online. Um, And then sport never stops, you know? So straight away, I think football came back really, really quickly. They found a way to make it happen. They might not have had the stadiums full of people like they used to, but they still straight away found a way to make it possible. Um, And I think one thing we realized more than everything is how important it is to our mental health. And what I would say now is that I think lower back pain has become the new obesity because now people are learning how important sport and exercise is just for your your health and well-being, let alone, you know, whether you want to be a sports person and things like that. So I think the pandemic has, if anything, proven how important sport is and it has given us so many ways to to find a new way to deliver it. Yeah, cool. Very true. I think the mental health, uh, sports and uh, mental health goes in hand in hand. It helped in the recovery process as well. Yeah. And I think the world now realizes, even your governments are now realizing how important it is and the effect it actually has on somebody. It's, you know, sport is so big. It is not just, you know, going to play football or going to play rugby or swimming. It is it's literally can be your whole life um, of what it can give you in your values and everything else. Yeah, yeah, true. Do you want to add something to that, Dennis? Yeah, I, I totally agree with 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 anything you said uh, right now. It, it's it had it had a huge impact on on everything. But if you look at the the positive side or the opportunities it brought as well. Like people were stuck inside, but the only thing they could go out for in in Europe at least was to run to uh, cycle, like do some cycling, to play paddle. If you look at the paddle, like it, it exploded during the pandemic because it was open, people could do it. So there were opportunities and hopefully people keep doing some sports now, uh, now that they can go out, now that, that the lockdown is over or the pandemic is hopefully behind us. Uh, oh, I hope people keep keep doing it because it's so important for our mental health and not only for our body, for just uh, the mental health as well. Yeah, true. Cool. Uh, there is another question from Pranav. Is it a good idea to learn sports online or is there more value in learning sports with a life instructor? Life instructor, yeah. <laughs> I think it depends on what you want out of it. At the end of the day, we've we've gone online to be able to meet the need of the current pandemic. Um, But obviously we are social people. Um, So, you know, I think the hardest thing we missed was actually not interacting and playing sport outside with our, with our friends or being able to be coached physically outside. But it, at the end of the day, it's what depends on what you want out of it. If your goal is to get fit, you can do that online if your goal is to be social and to to want to meet other people then you're going to do that you can do that online as well you can do that physically it it's the value is, is there it also both. depends upon which sports you're talking about many sports cannot yeah. be done online no um it depends on what you what you want what sport you want to play what you're yes. trying to get out of it but the fact that we can work out how to do it no matter where it is that's more what we got from it was We'll find a way to do it. <laughs> I think the whole essence of sports is to be go out, be there, and do it. You know, so because yeah. of pandemic, we are into a situation for some time where we were not able to do that. And I think uh, online is a backup option, but given a choice, given yeah. a condition, one has to go out and do that. Cool. Yeah, like I can't play tennis with you guys here doesn't quite work out for me <laughs> but yeah. you know you know it's never the same as actually physically going out there and playing but if it's just to keep fit then there's no reason why not yeah true yes you want to say something on that Dennis or are you everything yes, is I'd said I'd like, to, I'd like to react on the last thing uh, Pranav said should I stop my learning at sports and continue after the pandemic or should I continue through the pandemic? This is very interesting because in football, we've seen lots of injuries after the pandemic. 
and mm -hmm. it was revealing a lot of uh, about the players mm -hmm. because um, they had the opportunity to become better and we had to tell them like don't forget that you have now the opportunity to do things differently train every day at home go play outside get better improve on your technique things that they are not able to do as much when they play together or during a, a team session mm -hmm. so now they had the opportunity to train individually uh, and we there was a huge difference uh, before and after the pandemic that we could really see uh, the difference between the players that that kept working that did their homework uh, and if you compare that to the other ones that just stopped for a few months they be, they came back and they were injured you can in every situation you can you can you can tackle it differently and 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 the pandemic was an opportunity to work on some some skills that you had not or less time for uh, during during yeah, regular time mm -hmm. cool yeah and that's it like like dennis said it, it it takes three months to build your fitness it takes three weeks to lose it so as soon as you stop doing something you're then going to have to start it again. You might not have to start complete from the beginning because we have muscle memory and stuff, but you will have to build that back up. So never stop something. Just just find a way to, to do it in your current surroundings. Oh, Kerry, I've just recently faced that. You know, I, I, I uh, work out a lot and then I do many things going around. I was uh, not regular for two weeks. And mm -hmm. when I hit the gym back it was like my you know like a newborn baby going to a yeah. gym it was a very that's it we've all done it we've all gone on holiday yeah, or stopped for a few weeks and then gone back and gone oh gosh we've got to start again you know but I was the very upset it, with myself we'll remember you know? yeah, yeah. inconsistency <laughs> is very there. important yeah yeah so there is a probably a last question we'll take from him uh, Pranav, if you have more questions, you can always get back to us. And uh, it says, should I start my own company at sports and uh, become an Olympic player in the sport I choose? And uh, Kabir says, uh, can he connect to the speakers on LinkedIn? Yes, of course, you can reach out to them. And uh, sure. Shubhavni uh, says, hi, I'm a student and I want to really play badminton, but now I will be going to grade nine, so studies increase. How should I cope up with both? Shubhavni, yeah. I think, uh, you know, you should, uh, I mean, I understand what you're talking by mentioning that grade nine, that it's a pressure uh, of being in your board exams and uh, having going to the higher grades. But I'm sure you should find time for your badminton because if you feel good, you will come back and you will be more productive in your studies. What say, Kerry? And that's also really important. I think like lots of things or people forget. I know back in the UK now, they're making sure that students do an hour or 30 minutes of activity every day, especially during their GCSE times and exam times, because actually by doing that physical stuff, is what helps you then perform better in your exams and that's actually scientifically proven don't yeah. give up a little bit of exercise because it will actually make you perform better yeah so wow that's wonderful we're already uh, done with one hour of uh, conversation and the time flies and uh, so i would just uh, like to close with the last question that is there any recommendations of any books or anything uh, you would suggest the students, the parents and the audience should watch out, which can make a, a difference in their understanding about sports and dual careers? Oh, I don't really, uh, can't really think of any books off the top of my head. I think these days, like everyone's into the podcasts, yeah. um, audio books, podcasts, um, being able to follow people out there that do what it is you want to do. There's a lot of, at the end of the day, it's, it's about goal setting and, and wanting, being determined to do what you want to do. That's the most important thing out there, having a plan, sticking to it and, and moving forwards. Yeah. Um, anything yes, from you, Dennis? 
I'd say read a lot about uh, leadership as well, because uh, we often talk only about sports and what happen, what happens, sorry, on the field. But uh, there, there's way more than that. And often to, to get there, to be professional, you need to be very strong mentally. So leadership uh, is, is very, very, very important. And it's going to help you with, with a lot in your life, not only sports, but, but if you work for just a company, if you're out with friends, the way to handle situations, leadership is, is very important. So I'd recommend to read about that. And uh, I really like Robin Sharma. He writes about it. So feel free to, to have a look. These books are amazing. That's amazing, uh, Dennis. Uh, that's a very good point that leadership, uh, reading about leadership is also very important. It actually works on your uh, mindset and the thought process as well. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for the parents and the students who have joined us today. We'll be coming up with more topics. Um, you can also let us know if you want to hear uh, some, uh, something more about different professions. Uh, thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Kerry. I, I know how you guys have managed this time. I'm really uh, thankful to you for sparing so much of time and helping the students and parents with your journey and giving them an insight how they can take these inputs and make a decision about themselves. And I would request anyone, if they have to uh, have any questions for Dennis and Kerry, you can be just or you can write it to us also and you can uh, connect with them as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great evening ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Take care. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.